This blessing can be heard coming from a long way off. This blessing is making its steady way up the road towards you. This blessing blooms in the throats of women and springs from the hearts of men and tumbles from the mouths of children. This blessing is stitched into the seams of the cloaks that line the road, etched into the branches that trace the path, echoes in the breathing of the willing colt, the click of the donkey's hooves against the stones. Something is rising beneath this blessing. Something will try to drown it out, but this blessing cannot be turned back cannot be made to still its voice, cannot cease to sing its praises of the one who comes along the way it makes. The Lord be with you. Welcome to worship on, at St. Andrew's on this Palm Sunday. where we are. This week we move into Holy Week. So in between Sundays is this richness of the gospel that can be found. So I encourage you to join us for worship on Monday, Thursday. We'll be here in person and online at 7 o'clock that evening. We'll also post the Living Last Supper. Good Friday, this space will be open from noon to 7 The seven last words of Jesus will have stations around the gathering area and through the sanctuary. Find a half an hour and come stop by and reflect on that. If that's something you do need to do at home, by Tuesday we will send out an email with the packet or also have them printed here for you to pick up and do those seven words of Jesus at home or right where you are. Easter Sunday. We will worship together at 10 a.m. online and in person. We do have a sign-up for that service, so if you're planning to come and haven't signed up, please call the church office tomorrow or sign up on the Sign Up Genius you can find in the announcements. If the weather allows, and it's raining today, so it's not going to rain next Sunday, right? Perfect. So if weather allows, there will be fellowship out on the front steps at 11. And then in the back, we will have an outdoor service at noon, followed by an Easter egg hunt. Sunday school is going to take a break next week. They'll resume after Easter. That is our worship schedule for Holy Week. It is not the only way to walk with God in this week. Walk through this week and pay attention to all that God has done. If you would stand with me and let us join together in our call to worship. Shout out, don't keep silent. Let all the women say, God's steadfast love endures forever. Let all the men say, Let all who believe say, God's steadfast love endures forever. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the one who comes for us all. Amen.
Come to God and offer our prayers. Join in this responsive prayer of confession. Shouts come from deep within our hearts. Save us from lukewarm faith. Save us from paltry hopes and petty dreams. Save us from blindness and selfishness. Save us from wandering ways and hard-heartedness. We cry from the depths of our hearts and lift up our prayers. Hosanna, save us. Save us now. People of God, Christ has come. And through him we are saved. Know that in Jesus Christ you are forgiven. And be at peace. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Stay where you are, but take a moment, turn and pass the peace of Christ to whoever is near you and keep passing it on. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. As we continue to prepare our hearts for worship, let us join together in one voice in our prayer of illumination. O oh God, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as your word is proclaimed, we may respond with full faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning is Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, indeed it faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars. O Lord of hosts, my King and my God! Happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praise, Salah. 
Happy are those whose strength is in you and whose heart are the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. The God of gods will be seen in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob, Salah. Behold your shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than live in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. He bestows his favor and honor. No good thing does the Lord withhold from those who walk upright. O Lord of hosts, happy is everyone who trusts in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's Palm Sunday, and I couldn't have gotten the weather to cooperate with me more if I had asked it to. Because one of the things that I was thinking about with Palm Sunday is actually the road that Jesus would have walked on. And it would have been filled with, trying not to get it everywhere, muck and mud from all of the travelers who would be driving through with their donkeys and their horses. And while it was probably a Roman road, it was still filled with that mud. And the joy of seeing Christ arrive in Jerusalem, everyone grabbed what was at hand. Everyone grabbed coats, leaves from the closest trees, which was palms, and threw them on the road. just to keep God, to keep Christ from a little bit of mud. And the question I think we have this week that, ah, is what is it that we can offer? What little bit of muck and mud can we look at in our lives? Allow Christ to take, allow Christ to work with, or allow the world to to see and see how Christ is working in us. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for how you work and move. I ask that in this week we would look for the muck and the mud and allow you to form and create with it in our lives, opening new, new doors, new ministries. I praise you and I thank you. In Christ's name, amen.
Our gospel lesson this morning is Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. Listen for God's word that is for us in this day. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. And as they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing, untying the colt? They told them what Jesus has said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the ground, and others spread leafy branches that they'd cut in the fields. And those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David, Hosanna in the highest heaven. And Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he looked around at everything as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I didn't grow up with that Macy's Day parade on Thanksgiving or parade like Harold Hill describes in The Music Man with 76 trombones. I grew up with the Rose Parade. You all got up that, waited for that parade to come on. It's so late here. But the colors and the creativity and the detail were exquisite. Roses and flowers, of course, but also this huge variety of Seeds and greens and vines and even orange peels, of all things, were intricately placed to make designs and themes to lead us into a new year. This parade on Palm Sunday was, was also very different. There were not 76 trombones. There weren't millions of intricately placed flowers. No one had months to plan but it came together like an unrehearsed flash mob. Has anyone ever been in a flash mob? Ha, huh. awesome. I have not. I think we all should try it, though, sometime. This day, as we read the scripture that tells us of Jesus fulfilling prophecies in a way that no one saw coming, and this day was signaling that there was something new, we hear that it's near Passover, so the people were already remembering how God had delivered them from slavery in Egypt. It must have spoken to their prayers now, too, in the midst of this Roman rule. And it was in those days that Jesus was brought by a donkey or a young colt to ride into Jerusalem. And those crowds that had been following him and seeking him in villages and towns and fields today find that Jesus comes. He comes to these crowds in Jerusalem. He comes from the Mount of Olives and through the East Gate into Jerusalem near the Temple Mount. The Old Testament tells us a bit about why this is significant. Ezekiel gives this prophetic vision that speaks to this moment years later as he writes, then he brought me to the gate, the gate facing east. And there the glory of the God of Israel was coming from the east. The sound was like the sound of mighty waters and the earth shone with its glory. The vision I saw was like the vision that I had seen when I came to destroy the city and like the vision that I'd seen by the river Chabar. And I fell upon my face as the glory of the Lord entered the temple by the gate facing east, 
The Spirit lifted me up and brought me into the inner court, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. This east gate, it's also called the golden gate, the beautiful gate, and the mercy gate. It's where the glory of the Lord comes in this prophetic vision. The prophet Zechariah tells us how our king will come, triumphant and victorious and humble, riding on a donkey. Surely that day, as Jesus came through this beautiful golden east gate, some thought that the victory would be coming and it was, but not over the Romans. Yet, maybe in a way, the victory already was. For Jesus rode in as one who had conquered hearts and inspired minds. There weren't months to plan, and as the word sped, spread through the street, people rushed towards the gate, lining these narrow streets and grabbing coats and scarves and palms and whatever they came across as they clamored for a spot to see, as they let their hearts lead in praising Jesus in hope, believing they cried, Hosanna, Hosanna. And we are invited to join them. In the Gospel of Luke, some ask Jesus to Quiet the crowds down. They're making too much noise. And he replies saying, if these were silent, even the stones would shout out. This is the moment in the midst of the gospel when creation is called to praise. Caution doesn't lead, but unabashed joy and praise. It's finally time there's this moment to rejoice in the good news and in victory in one who brings healing and every hope they've ever longed for. So it's anything they can grab as they lay this path before Jesus with many colors of many coats and palms and scarves. A path that offered what people could give right in that instant that reflected their allegiance to Jesus and they let their praise loose right there in the street, shouting and dancing like no one was watching, even though everyone was. There are moments in life that are marked for celebration. And then there's moments the celebration just happens. I remember the day of my high school graduation and there in the midst of a sea of yellow and black plastic robes with those mortarboard hats and those tassels, there were flowers and people packed into stadium seats around a football field and we sat in these perfectly arranged folding chairs. And then after the speeches and after all the 500 and some names were read, finally came that moment when we were told to move our tassels to the other side as it was declared that we were now high school graduates. Any of you remember that moment? All around me, people jumped up and yelled and they threw their hats in the air. I jumped up and I smiled and I had that lovely wave of relief and joy and I took off my hat, but I didn't throw it. I didn't let it go. I think a part of me wanted to keep the tassel, but in the midst of it, I missed this moment to let it fly through the air in celebration. I had this bit of innate shyness holding me back, a bit of practicality, and a, a bit of feeling like, I know I'm graduating with all these people, but do I really belong? I missed that moment, and I regret it. This may seem like a strange story to bring into this reflection on Palm Sunday. Yet maybe it echoes some of our missed moments of praise that we might have as individuals or a community. 
There's moments to come that ask for spontaneous celebration and joy and praise. Moments that ask us to let go of the should I or who is watching feelings. And to praise God with all of our heart and all of our soul and all of our mind and all of our strength. With loud voices and the ability to not stand still but have to move. I think sometimes we miss these moments and we hold back and sometimes we even keep the praise secret in our bursting hearts. Maybe we realize the regret or maybe we don't, but there's times where our hearts and souls long for more. Years ago, I would take my Walkman, yeah, it was that long ago, with a mixtape of different praise music and go up into the hills. And when I got to one of those places that I was pretty sure no one else was around, I would, I would sing really loud because no one could hear me, right? And I could run and skip and dance. And it was like praying and praising, and it was letting all that was within me out before the Lord. And while I'm pretty sure it looked really silly to anyone who happened to pass by, hence the trying to be where no one was, I'm also pretty sure I couldn't really explain it. It's exactly what my soul needed to let go and praise, to find the ways to do that. Now, I know this will surprise you, but Presbyterians are not known as the dancing in the aisles type of congregation, right? Did I miss it? We're not the most demonstrative of our brothers and sisters in Christ, and we think and consider, and we're really good at planning. We're great at having meetings. But maybe once in a while, we need to be Palm Sunday people, people who praise God Like no one's watching us and everyone is watching Jesus, waving palms and shouting Hosanna because we can't contain the truth and those feelings of hope, belonging of love and acceptance of joy, joy that Jesus gives to us. And so when those moments come, those moments come in your lives and and Jesus shows up, coming to you with victory and hope, with answered prayer and new life. Don't miss the moment to throw your hat, to take off your coats, to grab branches, to cut the flowers you never planned to cut, and run to praise Jesus with all that you have and all that is within you. How could we regret that? Hosanna. Blessed is Jesus who comes to us and saves. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Let us stand and praise God together.
Let us together affirm our faith with prayer of affirmation. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. be seated. This morning with our offering, we are also accepting or taking the one great hour of sharing and the fish boxes if you have them. The offertory plates can be found in the back and for online, all of the giving information is on the online giving tab of the webpage. Let us continue in worship with the prayer of dedication. Holy God, With praise we seek to offer you good and extravagant gifts. Open our eyes to see Christ's glory. Open our hands to offer Jesus great gifts. Open our hearts to offer him our love. Enjoy acceptance all our offerings. Amen.
as we gather with our hearts and prayers around Christ's table. I do want to let you know that our brother in Christ, Larry Everhart, passed away this last week. This coming Wednesday at 1 o'clock, there will be a memorial service here, the same precautions we have right now. As we prepare to remember and celebrate Larry's life, let us also lift up Lorna and her family in our prayers. Let us join all of our prayers and all of our hearts together. O oh, holy God, as we hear your word this day that tells us of such hope and such praise, we are thankful, O oh Lord, that scripture also tells us it wasn't a perfect moment. Times were hard then too. You know that times are hard now, and you come to hear our prayers, to hear our hearts, even as you long to show us moments of joy to stop and celebrate and praise. Holy God, we open to you our hearts, all that we're holding inside, and we lift it up in prayer. We do lift up to you Lorna and the Everhart family. We thank you, O oh Lord, for all the love and all of the memories they have shared with Larry. May your peace and your comfort support them as they commit Larry to you in this week. Today, O oh Lord, we surround Craig Samuelson with our prayers. May your peace surround him in the hospital. May his body respond to the treatments the doctors have for COVID pneumonia. We pray for his healing, his rest, his breath in this day and every day that follows. Be with Penny, O oh Lord, and give her wisdom to know how to support and care for him right now. We continue to pray for Ed Tenney. Be with him as his neighborhood is in quarantine and help him get the care he needs, O oh Lord. Show him the road ahead, we pray. We pray for Jane's friend Andrew as he faces a weighty diagnosis of a brain tumor and we pray for help, O oh Lord. We pray for his surgery tomorrow and we pray for Carla who's walking beside him. Lord, we pray for Meg Melling and her surgery tomorrow. Draw near, we pray, that all would go smoothly. We lift up Pedro, who's far away yet near to our hearts, and ask for healing for his hand. And we pray, O oh Lord, for Annette's dad. We pray, O oh Lord, as he's back in the hospital, that we would hold his heart and his peace and offer and bring the right help, we pray. We lift up the Stalnecker family to you, and you know, O oh Lord, all that they've been through and all that they're going through. Bring your help, your light, your hope, we pray. Oh, holy God, we rejoice and give thanks for Bill Long and his healing. We rejoice and give thanks that Molly's now able to visit her mother and they can spend time together. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the moments of joy. That joy we need to grab onto, that joy to loosen our hearts and lift up our hope. Show us that more and more especially as we walk through this week and see all that you have already done and what it means for us in this world. It's not always easy to see, O oh Lord, but it matters. Walk with us, we pray. We join all of our hearts and all of our prayers together with the words that Jesus came and gave to us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. People of God, go into this week, this holy week, looking to God, pondering, praying, seeing all that Jesus has done, and find moments in the midst to praise and wonder, and let your heart and soul turn to God. With all the blessing of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Go today and every day. See you on Thursday. Amen. Amen. Amen.